What's up, man? How's it going? Good to see you. Can you hear me okay? I can, yeah. All right. So thanks for joining us. I uh, just kind of introduced you, but I like to have my guests, you know, give their own kind of background, how you got here, you know, what, what your mission is, where, where you're headed, all that good stuff. You want to give us the, the three-minute version? The three-minute version. Okay. Uh, yeah. So essentially, I graduated college with no clue of what I wanted to do with my life. I had a degree in theater and psychology. I didn't want to be an actor or a psychologist. And so I thought, well, what do I want to do? Which led me to personal development almost immediately. And I got fascinated by John Maxwell and Darren Hardy and Jim Rohn and Brian Tracy, these really big names of personal development. And I started blogging uh, based upon what I was reading which then led to me ultimately having a website that led to me coaching people. I then wanted to launch my own podcast, started doing public speaking, and just all these things began to scale over time, all centered around ultimately what was personal development and my fascination with productivity, with healthy habits, and all of that integrated into just my personal interest in all these, these areas. And then I was sharing what I was learning with everybody else and seeing a real connection with all of that. And so for me, my, my podcast is the best platform where I share what I'm learning. And that, that's where I've connected the most with my, my audience. And I have found that the more that I you know, consume awesome information, the more I can then share it. And I have loved my own personal journey that I then get to bounce off of my audience and, and feedback with that, which is fun. So to me, like this whole journey post-college has been, well, how do I improve myself? And then how do I share what I'm learning with others? And that has been kind of the, you know, what I've been doing for a long time. I love it. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, you know, a very parallel story to mine, uh, which I've, I've told many times. I don't know if you're familiar, but yeah, I, bottom line is I struggled quite a bit actually in college. It sounds like I had maybe even a, a bit of a rougher time than you, or I was actually to the point of like I was suicidal and it wasn't mm. college itself. It was the events building up to it, which... I just had a set of circumstances that I essentially looked at myself as a, as a victim versus an owner of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, my brain's broken. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, maybe one day uh, I'll get lucky and hit the lottery and everything will be great. Or, and if only I could have this, this, and this, then everything would be great versus understanding, you know, looking from within, like you were saying, and, and, and understanding what it really means to be happy inside. And then, when you when you do ha when you do these actions and you take these actions, then that's what compounds, multiplies, and your life becomes surrounded by, and that's the owner mentality, growth owner, right? Right. And so I, I too discovered self help in 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 college. A professor kind of serendipitously introduced me to a book. You were mentioning some of the old schools. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Mr. Dale Carnegie. I'm sure you're familiar. Oh yeah, and that started my journey, and I just became an insatiable self-help beast as well. And I just was using myself as a human science experiment, and just <laughs> like, all right, I am determined to become happy, and I'm going to figure this out one step at a time. I don't care what it takes. And I was taking crazy notes and trying different things, and that just kind of evolved my journey over the years. And as you know, it doesn't happen overnight. Right. But what's cool about universal principles, you know, like these books we read, they're. I, I realize there's a common theme. And so I, I would see like a lot of these authors, like you're saying, Jim Rohn, you know, Dale Carnegie, you know, a lot of these guys would say similar things, but in their own unique way, right? Their, their own. And, and I started to see these patterns. And then I kind of really started honing in on like, there's these universal principles in life that have been around since the beginning of man and will probably be around until, will be around until we hopefully don't destroy ourselves, but they'll be around till the end. And if you hang, you can hang your hat on these. And this is what you want to develop your life and your course, or excuse me, your, your habits around. Mm -hmm. um, I break them into these five core areas, but it sounds like you've kind of figured out a similar type strategy and you're, you're, you're building your habits around these principles that you're learning from these, these guys. Yeah. Oh, certainly. I think that's been for me, one of the, the, the best aspects of personal growth is what you just mentioned, discovering these principles that are just consistent across the board and to that point, like, I, I do read a lot of those books. And they, all, they are saying the same things in different ways. And I love the different perspectives. I love the different insights. I think that, to me, is what brings it to life in a new way, regardless of what that principle is discussing. I, I get so much value from, yeah, just the new voice in that, which I think is in part why I wanted to share my own voice, too. Because I, I, maybe I have a, a, you know, a, a unique thought as well. 
And it's, that's a fun process to go through. Totally. And you know, that, that brings us to the point. Another thing I'm always talking about is like, you know, in terms of this individual perspective, I feel like a lot of, it's become like cool to talk about, like, you got to connect with your why, but a lot of people don't really understand what that means. And this is kind of a perfect example to me of what that means. And it's sort of like, everybody's got their own predisposed, you know, likes, dislikes, passions, you know, some people are early birds, night owls, different things are going to resonate. People are going to live their lives differently and, and get to the same, but they can use that same underlying universal principle, but they need to figure out what's that inner thing that's going to connect with them to say, yes, I get mm -hmm. it. I want to do it. Yeah. And this is, and I'm not going to stop until I do it. And this is how I'm going to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's no cookie cutter, like, okay, like, for example, you know, a universal principle, let's just say, do unto others, right? Tr treat, treat others the way you want to be treated, essentially, which is the main lesson from, from Dale Carnegie's that book that started all for me. Just, just make people feel special. It's not rocket science, right? Um, and some people, a lot of people will hear that and be like, yeah, no, I get it. But then the moment they start talking to, to people, they go into their old habits of talking about themselves, Mm. You know, not looking people in the eye, not asking them questions, not remembering details about their lives, right? How many people do that? And so, you know, to be able to connect somehow and sort of, and, and you never know what book's going to do that, I guess is kind of the point here. And, and what person talking on a podcast is going to have you go, yes, oh my God, <laughs> I get it. That's it. Uh, and then the key is, as, as you know, I'm, you know, tell me if you agree or not, but in this in this world we're living in where it's just uh, instant gratification and we're ADD to the max being able to get more and more by doing less and less and hitting a button and basically getting anything you want you have to develop a system to develop habits because mm -hmm. you'll read something that's inspiring or you'll hear something maybe on this podcast your podcast and people will say what we just said like yes that's it but then if you don't actually do the action enough times for it to become habit it's all for naught. You might as well have never heard it, right? And then that causes that internal conflict inside us where we're like frustrated about the fact that I know I need to be doing this, but I'm not doing it, but I can't figure out a way to, to get it going. Do you have any insight on that? Well, I mean, also to that same point, there are, there's so many inputs that we have, like because of the internet, because of podcasting and these, I mean, there's lots of resources out there. We almost to some degree are just consuming way more than we'll ever be able to act upon. As I know that there's a paralysis by analysis, so we just all of that information in our heads. What do we do with it? Consistency is making that decision of saying, I'm going to do this habit and then stick to it over time. And then while you're doing that, not you know pivoting all the time to the next habit and the next, the next shiny object. And so I have found myself, I mean, for years exploring lots of possibilities, but that also means I am distracting myself with new strategies constantly. So I think one of the things I've been trying to do is you, you know, consolidate these ideas together and these principles and really make the decision, well, here's the ones I want to stick to and the rest of them will set them aside for now and like really define my core habits, my core values, my core strengths and tendencies and lean on those as opposed to just finding the next shiny object. I mean, I love new wisdom, new insights, I'm all for it. But there has to be a limit because if I just right. consume it all in, I just get overwhelmed with too many possibilities. So I want to keep it as simple as I can. Yeah, absolutely. And right. And so, and that's, I think that's the key for everybody. And so, like I said, everybody's got their own system. And my, my goal in life is to create, create a universal system that even though, like I said, it's not possible to have like, here's the principle, here's how you're going to do it, cookie cutter for everybody. I do believe there's a universal way to to use gamification, which is my my kind of my main thing, and I, and we'll talk about that in a second. I know you responded to our um, when, when you filled out a couple of ways you gamify your life, um, mm. but to sort of trick your the idea is to trick your little dog lizard brain, which is still caught up in primordial times when you know it was all about how can I get as much stuff as I want as I can to be able to survive being eaten by a saber tooth tiger which no longer really applies today. Obviously some people are in better positions than others, but for the majority, you know, you're not in danger of that yet. Our, your, our instincts are still causing us to miss, miss want, which is a, a, a word I got from, I took the Yale happiness course, which was a really cool course. And it talks about how, um, 
we are constantly miswanting. We're, we're, our motives, our actions, our habits are based around these things that we think will make us happy. Mm. You know, money, power, fame, whatever. But then it's, it, if you don't understand how it all relates, and there is a certain amount, like it, act, it actually does studies. It shows like there is a certain amount of income that you are happier and it's proven, mm. Mm. but it's not nearly as high as people think. So uh, it was like three or four years ago, they did the study. It was around $70,000 or so and with inflation and stuff. Now it's high, I'm sure it's higher, but it's interesting to know that because, you know, people just have this, they go through our system. Right. And it's, I feel like the default is more, 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 the more money I make, the more money, all happier, the bigger, the house, the big, the better, the car, the, and it's, it's, it's not true. And it just, it's, it's false. And there's, there's a reason there's that show the lottery ruined my life. I mean, it's, mm. if you don't, if you haven't developed these core values and, and, and developed a way to live your life where you're building momentum in the hap the areas that actually truly make you happy and career and finance is one of them. That's one of my cores I talked about, but how are you building that? Are you loving what you're doing? Do you, are you passionate about it? Does it have a higher purpose of giving back to the world type of thing? So all these things come into play. And to me, it's about developing a system to hold yourself accountable to these things. I, so that's why I'm, doing what I'm doing. I'm, I've got an app that I'm developing that gamifies it and you're this rocket ship and you're <laughs> flying around and you've got these five cores of your engine. And you know, you get in order to break up earth's gravitational pull, you have to slowly but surely start building your success habits in each of your cores. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the next level and you are fighting uh, alien spaceships and fighting through asteroid <laughs> fields. And there's, there's side missions and stuff. So to me, that's how I'm doing it. Do you, what is, what is your system in terms of, how do you gamify your life? You know, how, how do you ensure that you are taking these habits, not only the ones that you are trying to develop, but making sure that the ones you've already developed, you're, you're taking to the next level and, and continuing to grow. I mean, part of that is that I love spreadsheets. I love data. I love tracking and all kinds of information. And so I've done that for years. I mean, I've tried different apps and but I tend to lean back on a boring spreadsheet to track what I'm doing. And I just, for me, that tends to work because I can see what I've done. It's very clear. The numbers kind of tell the story. So part of that answer is I keep track of what I'm doing. Uh, my calendar is really detailed. My task managers are really detailed. So the more information I collect, the more I can kind of visually see what I'm doing. And so to that degree, it's kind of like gamification. And I'm, I'm looking for like ways to hack through my own life and see the visual, what that looks like in the spreadsheet. Uh, another thing that I have done that's been kind of really essential to me, especially in the last couple of years as I became a dad, was kind of anchoring on habits I want to do around my daughter's schedules. So as a simple mm. example there, I have to pick up my daughter from daycare at 3.30 every afternoon, and I now take her to the gym. Uh, she gets some more daycare there and gets to play with more kids, and I get the chance to work out. And my, my challenge was, well, how do I have time to exercise if I've got this new schedule with daycare drop-offs and pickups and complications in my life, right? right? And it was trying to figure out, well, what core habits do I care about? How do I guarantee those things are going to happen every day? What does that look like, practically speaking, in my life with my time? And when I can figure out ways to tack certain things together and like the anchor habit is going to pick her up from daycare and then I can tack on the habit of, and now we're going to go to the gym. And then all of a sudden, I have guaranteed gym time for myself every day. Whereas if I didn't do that, it might be just a toss up of, well, I do it, why not? I don't know. And I don't like that uncertainty. I'd rather have the guarantee that the calendar says this is what I'm doing because I designed it on purpose to make it easy. And that means the habit will take place because I have removed those obstacles. Ooh, now we're talking. I love it. I love it. Let's get into this. So speaking of spreadsheets, so let me just real quick. So this is my, I was actually just working on this before, um, before we talked. So I told you I'm building this app, but in the meantime, it's, a, it's all on an Excel spreadsheet. And I literally have each, each of my cores listed. I have the habits I'm currently working on. Uh, I have gamification techniques for each, how to reduce the friction to make sure that I take them. Someone to what you were just talking about. I have tech to help. Like, so if I have an app or a certain tech that I'm using, it helps. Um, and there's like one, there's also one time actions like things. Okay. If I just set like, for instance, like tracking your finances and, or investing, like they didn't used to have this type of stuff, but in today's world, like use the fact that there's, there's apps that will automatically take 
you know, we'll round up if you spend a dollar and 40 cents, they'll round up, you know, or 39 cents to 40, whatever. And they'll put it in to your investment account. And so you're just automatically growing without even having to think about it. And there's a lot of those types of things that you just set it and forget it, which is really fortunate we have, but a lot of us aren't taking advantage of that. Right. It's like, Oh, what's, what's five cents going to matter? Well, let's see how that, that stuff adds up over 20 years when you go to retire right? mm. versus, Oh, I'll get around to it. I'll invest. I'll take some of my paycheck, but no, then you hit the button on Amazon and you buy that shiny golden frog that would look good next year. Right. Um, so getting back to what you were saying, you mentioned a couple techniques and I don't, have you read the book atomic habits by James? I have. Yes. So, uh, then you, you know, what, what you mentioned, the terms that, that I would, uh, associate with those are two things. Number one is habit stacking and number two is temptation bundling. So the habit stacking part, which is brilliant, and I want to focus on that because I use it and it's part of when I write things, my lists and, and things to help reduce that friction to get the habits going. So for instance, my morning mantra, like when I take my shower, I know, okay, so I'm already taking a shower, right? So that's something I'm already doing. It's an automatic habit that I've already mm -hmm. done. It's mm -hmm. there. Don't have to worry about that. Okay, but what am I, is there an opportunity there? So what I now do is I, I have my morning mantra that I've memorized. I say my morning mantra while at the same time doing my stretches. I had a basketball injury a couple of years ago and it requires me to do stretching, which I should have been doing everywhere anyways, but now I, I have to do it. And so I, I have it stacked, right? So I, I take my shower, I say my mantra, which coincides with my stretching. I've got it to the point where they basically take about the same amount of time. And then I finish it with what I'm grateful for. And I take three deep breaths, right? So that's habit stacking. You're taking a habit, you're already doing it and you're stacking it with something you want to do. And mm -hmm. then that just becomes a routine. That becomes something that becomes automatic, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then temptation bundling is, is another one where it's kind of kind of works in the opposite way where you basically, it's, I kind of look at temptation bundling as pleasure delaying. I don't think he <laughs> refers to it as that, but there's a scene from, you ever see that movie with Tom Cruise, Vanilla Sky, by any chance? For a long time, but yeah. Yeah. So that, that, that's a big theme of that movie. Uh, he's a big pleasure delayer. And I just always stuck with me. And I was like, what does it really matter? To be? But in this day and age, like what we were talking about earlier, the more, in my opinion, you can hold off on, on and delay your pleasure mm -hmm. by saying, okay, if I do this, then I'll allow myself to get that. Mm -hmm. And holy, <laughs> holy cow, is it effective? Because it incorporates this other principle called the Pareto principle, which says when you give yourself less time to do something, you're going to be way more productive. Give yourself a week to do something. It's going to take you a week. Give yourself an hour. Somehow you'll figure out how to get it done in an hour, right? <laughs> so when you pleasure delay, when you temptation bundle, you're essentially going, okay, I know that I want this reward over here. This is something that I want to do. So I am going to make sure I'm going to do this, which I need to do. And in doing that, I will then get that reward. So for instance, you know, for me, I want to, like, if I'm, if I'm working during the day and I want to take my lunch break and I'm like, okay, I'm really hungry, but I know that I need to get this little section of what I'm working on done. I'm not going to leave to go take my lunch break until I've done that. Mm -hmm. And it just, it just something that I, if I hadn't done it, I might come back after lunch and it might take me two hours. I'm able to get it done in like 10 minutes, right? <laughs> and I also, that's a, I also use my 70% rule, which is, is a good one, which is don't try to get everything perfect. Just get it 70% mm -hmm. and move forward. And then you can always tweak later. So yeah, so those were, you know, you, the, when, with your daughter taking her to, right? Your, your habit stacking on that because you're doing that anyways. And then you're right. adding habits that you want to do. And I love that. It's brilliant. And then people, if people can start seeing that in their own lives and start seeing those opportunities, it really is cool because then it's like, you're already doing something. Right. Habits don't care if they're good or bad, helping or hurting you. Just go ahead and stack in one that you want to do. And it's not going to happen right away because you're going to resist at first, right? You're, you're like, this isn't my normal routine. I don't want to do this, but you just fake it till you make it and you just keep doing it and you hold yourself accountable. I give, so that little Excel sh sheet I showed you, I actually score myself every single morning. It's part of my routine. So I, I go and I look at my mindset, my career, my finances, my relationships, my physical health, my emotional health and giving back. And I give myself and I have the habits underneath each. And I mm. basically look at how I did the day before and I give myself a score. Hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I just think it's I mean, the idea of delaying pleasure. I mean, I'm a, I do that 
almost like intuitively sometimes, like the idea of like delaying lunch for a few minutes. I, I don't, in the morning, I force myself to do the dishes before I have my morning coffee. That's like a, a weird thing that I started doing years ago. And then I catch myself throughout the day thinking about that. Not that the, co the coffee is the reward in that sense, but I'm also thinking about that when I'm doing a task. It's like, because I'm doing something, I, let's say I don't want to do, and there's something else I do want to do, but I will think about that, that coffee scenario. Like, no, 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 finish the dishes, do the work, and then we'll go on to the next one. And it is amazing how much more work actually gets done and how fast it gets done. Just right. Like, oh. It's a really neat concept. And it's, this is the type of thing that drives me nuts when like these things aren't taught in, in mainstream schools, right? It's like, we're <laughs> right. learning all these things and it's like, how to, you know, something as simple as this, which is a huge life hack to basically make, make yourself super productive and, and get the things done that you want to do. But, you know, it's like, I just happened to read this book and so did you, and we're kind of doing it on our own. And again, this is why to me, like my life's mission is to, is to help people kind of all sort of see like there's, you know, whatever your, you know, again, it's customized. So whatever your pleasure delay is for you, it was coffee, maybe for somebody else, it's a, a strawberry protein shake, you know, that doesn't matter. But if you're using those same principles to be able to just take those actions mm. and then, uh, and, and the key is just, just to hold yourself accountable and do it enough times until it's on autopilot. Cause that's the cool right. thing about habits. Again, they don't care if they're good or bad helping or hurting, but once they got, once they're going, they're doing their thing. So they're either helping you or hurting you. They're either causing friction in your life or they're building momentum and tailwinds because your brain only has, as you were saying, we have so many inputs coming in. You, we only have so much information that we can process. And so our brains are just constantly trying to conserve energy mm. and put things on autopilot. And that's what mm -hmm. habits are. They're going, okay, got that. Don't need to think about that. <laughs> and I love too, I'm working on projects. I notice a similar thing that happens, which is if I like pivot my brain to say, I'm gonna think about this certain area of my life. It could be health, could be business, whatever the thing is. I get really obsessed with that thing. Like my brain just wants to find more information to let me like, like fuel that process I'm going through. And so I get like, I almost end up building habits and building systems around whatever I am, allow myself to focus on intensely. And I, I love the fact that if I choose the right kind of project to work on or the right kind of focus, it's almost like this magnet of all this new information that comes in and I notice the right things and I begin to make progress in a way that I wouldn't have otherwise, but I just, I allowed myself to say like, this is the area to dig into. And then uh, progress happens like exponentially faster, which is, I think I find it amazing. Totally. Totally. I mean, it, it is, it's really cool, you know, and, and, you know, you've got your system that you've got going. So, you know, you, you talk on this podcast, like, so what is your kind of, what is your mission? What is your goal? How do you, you know, you're obviously, I mean, you and I, we're on the same like mine and that I, I love having conversations with this because I always learn from my guests and get so much out of it. It sounds like you do as well. Right. And it just feeds your soul. It gives you that energy and it's, it's an amazing, I love doing these. So other than, you know, having these, these and, and, and giving great tips and whatnot to your audience, like, what is your purpose? What is your plan? Like, where do you want to be three, five years from now? I've actually been shifting some of what I've been working on. So I grew my podcast, The 5 a.m. Miracle, for the last you know eight and a half-ish years. And I've been pivoting my business model to do more of helping other people launch their own podcasts. So it went from this personal mission of I am you know helping both their personal development, their productivity, their healthy habits, to now figuring out how do I help other people get their messages out there in the world as well. And I feel like that has become a big shift for me because I basically have gone from like a specialist in the areas I care about to how do I help someone else get their voice out there? And th I feel like that's, that's the most important work I need to be doing going forward is to provide like that kind of help to others. And I love my own show. I'm going to continue to do it for a long time, but there's this like this nagging sensation that like I need to help somebody else do kind of what I've experienced now. Because I right. really enjoyed that process. So to me, like the 5 a.m. miracle concept, waking up early, dying before breakfast, like awesome stuff. But that's just what I've been doing. What is somebody else? Like, what is their intuition? What is their voice? How can they get that out there? Because there's so many mediums, like we're doing now or podcasting or whatever, to say, like, how do we like serve people better by getting more awesome voices out there? And I, I find that to be really fascinating right now. Yeah, I love that. Right. So you're, you're, you're doing one of the course, the, the giving back portion, which as you get older, you know, like I was saying earlier, we have these miswantings and especially when we're younger, 
it's all about just more, more, more me, me, me. Mm. And you get older, you have kids, uh, you start to realize what life is really about mm. and that, you know, you want to do good for the world and how good that feels. You want to do good for your kids. You want them to grow up in a society that you would be proud to know that you contributed to. And, you know, the sooner people kind of understand that, I think the better off they'll be because then that creates this like inner burning desire for whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it creates that motivation and that persistence and passion that's needed for any business, mm -hmm. right? Because if you don't have that, I mean, you know what I'm talking about because you started your own thing eight and a half years ago. So you know what a journey it is to grow something from scratch. And the amount of time, it's just, it's too easy to give up otherwise if you don't have those things. And that's what most people do. And so you got to find that again, going back to that, why, like, why am I doing this? So it sounds, that's great. It sounds like you found this inner desire, say, I've figured out something. I'm really good at it and passionate about it. How do I help others and, mm -hmm. and, and make some money? doing it at the same time, which is really the goal in life. In my and, uh, Brian Tracy has a, a thought about this in terms of he, his perspective is like when you're hiring someone, you try to hire someone who is hungry for whatever it is they're doing. Like they have a strong internal drive for, you know, for sales or for the, the job is you're hiring for. And I, whenever I've heard him discuss that, I've always thought, well, like, what am I hungry for? Like, what am I, what is my drive? Like, what mm -hmm. is really propelling me out of bed at 5 a.m.? Why do I care so much? And the answer to my question for myself has changed over the years. So what was my hunger 10 years ago is vastly different today. So I've had to, in a sense, like reinvent my why as I've evolved. Mm -hmm. And that to me has been a really kind of, I mean, not a midlife crisis, but like I've had these moments of like, what am I doing now? What is the point of all this? And you right. know, having kids or buying a house or building a business, like bigger life rocks will ca cause you to pause and like ask these tough questions which is then really helpful because they have the chance to answer them directly. And that to me is where I, a lot of my growth comes from is like forcing myself to answer hard questions and then being very clear about what my next, you know, next action will be, but how that ties to a bigger vision. And that's been easier as I've gotten older because I can see, I know myself better now and then I can clarify how I fit in this bigger picture better. But it, it is a, a journey for me, like a constant asking the tough question, and then answering it directly, I find is very helpful. I love that, man. Yeah, I mean that that's that's it. That that's exactly right. And you know, it's when I have conversations with people like you about this, it's it's just always um, it, it, it's I love hearing people that get that. And you know, to me, it's like you and I talk about that, and it's just like it's so obvious, right? But then there's so many people out there. Uh, that just, that don't see that, that don't get it. And so, right. That's why we do stuff like this. Right. And so speaking of your show, so you, are you, are you one episode a week? How many episodes do you do each week? Yes. One a week. I've done that for the full length of the show for eight and a half years. So I'm on episode 430 or something like that. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Good fun. for you. And what, and who are the types of guests that you interview? Um, I do lots of people. Um, in the beginning, it was mostly podcasters because they had microphones, but now people have access to more technology. Than right. Before. I was going to say your, your, your sound. We just discussed this. Might sorry to interrupt you. My team's sure. like, we, we listen to some of our podcasts and we're like, the sound is awful because like, especially in IG live like this, some people mm. just talk into the phone and your sound is awesome. Like the Which, best. That we've it's had surprising because I'm talking into the phone. There's no microphone. I mean, really? I'm, yeah. Like I've got oh. this guy here, but it's not plugged in. So Dude, maybe it's, maybe you've just got that radio voice. Cause it's coming well, across like super clear. Part of it's the voice. Part of it is, I mean, there's acoustic panels behind me. Like the room ah. is treated for echoes and river and reverb. So anyway, that's yeah. a whole other, we can get into podcast tech later, but yeah, yeah I think the, the bigger picture is that I, what was the question? I already forgot where you're going. <laughs> uh, no, I was just saying, you know, right. Where, where do you, you know, types of guests that you interview oh, and what right. do you guys talk about? Yeah, so my podcast has been, the show, The 5A Miracle, was designed to allow me the flexibility to have a wide variety of topics, because I have a lot of interests. The world personal growth is very varied, productivity I love, healthy habits I love. So my guests I bring on are really designed to exemplify some of those core features, like what kind of, of example can they provide for my listeners? So I view my listeners as high achievers, so they're people who want to set big goals and achieve them. And so my guests can be basically anyone who has an interesting take on goal achievement, success, getting things done, or just they're an inspirational story. So I have a really eclectic mix, mix of guests. 
Um, I also do a lot of shows that are just me, the solo episode. So it's basically in, the end goal of the episode is an action. Like what can the listener do based upon what they just heard in the last 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. And so every episode ends with an, a clear action step to say, now that you've heard this, go do something. Like change your life now based upon what just happened. It's not just professional development to like listen and soak it in. It's also actionable on purpose. And for me, that has been an essential part of what the show has become. I love it. I love it. And to me, because that's, that's it, man. It's what we were talking about earlier, where if you don't do something, if you don't have something, some sort of system, some sort of way to say, all right, let's take this action, you're just never going to do it. You're going to hear it and go, that sounds great. You're going to listen to a podcast and go, oh, that's amazing. But then as soon as, you know, the next shiny thing comes onto your screen or, you know, your multi, your multi-screening with your <laughs> Netflix and your Hulu and your iPhone and your tablet and your computer, right? There's just, there's, there's too much. So yeah, one simple actionable step. And that's, that's a huge principle. Um, speaking of principles that, that will, is the only way in my opinion to get things done and to change your, your life and your habits is just super small and specific and one step at a time. Cause you've tried to do too much. You, our brains go, Nope. <laughs> That's way too hard. I knew it was too hard. I'm just going to go back to eating the Cheetos and bonbons and sitting on the tea on the couch. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Okay. So in wrapping up, so we kind of, we, you discussed one of these, but I always like to end with, you know, what are some, some, some success habits that you've developed and, and ways that you're gamifying them. So you had already, you pre-filled out. I'll kind of help remind you. Um, the mm -hmm. first one that you answered was you schedule trips to the gym right after you pick up your daughter. Mm -hmm. daycare that's mm -hmm. a fantastic one habit stacking right doing something you're already doing adding something that you need to do um your second one here you're saying even though i work from home i schedule work time at a library to guarantee focus so why don't you tell us about that of all the things that i have found to be most helpful to get anything done i have found that the environment is the number one factor for me uh, i think it's the case for everybody else but i know it is for me which means that, for example, going to the gym with my daughter, when I'm at the gym, like I'm wearing gym clothes, I'm surrounded by people who are working out, there's workout equipment there, like I'm gonna work out. I'm not gonna go to the gym and take a nap. I'm not gonna go there and work on homework. I'm gonna do what I came to do, which was exercise. The same thing applies for my work. If I'm going to a library, I'm in an environment designed for focus, designed for study, designed for reading, designed for execution of a task. Like it's not a place where I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do my laundry. I'm not gonna feed my dog. I'm not gonna, what, whatever else I would do in my home office, which by the way, working from home, worst place to work if you actually care about getting things done. And I do whatever I can to leave my home office when there's a task that is really important. I mean, the books that I've written, I wrote them at a library, not at home. Like I right. know that I have to go to the location that guarantees the thing is gonna happen. And if I don't do that, I run the risk of all kinds of distraction because my, my brain is pinging all the time. And I know that like I have that, you know, the caveman brain just like looking around, what else could I do? And I, I have to rein myself in. Totally. Which that's where the environment comes from. I love it. That, that's a fantastic one. And that's another James Clear, um, one of his, his tips in his book is design mm -hmm. your environment, right? Like. Yep. Like don't, don't put yourself in a position or an environment where it's going to increase the friction, you know, distractions all around, but, and to separate areas, he, right. He talks about like, you know, this is my area for reading. This is my area for studying. And, and if it's at the library where you feel super, right. Cause it's like, it's almost like when I put my glasses on in the morning uh, and I sit at my computer screen, I kind of like feel like, all right, here's my superhero suit. Like, I'm mm. just, you know, this is, this is, this is making me, helping me to focus and do what I need to do kind of similar concept, right? It's like, I'm putting myself in this situation where I know that I feel super productive and I'm going to be, able, and it's a cool little feeling, isn't it? Like mm -hmm. when you sit down at the library, you're like, all right. Right. Yep. And the hardest part is just getting there. It's oh, getting to the habit of getting totally. there. Once you're there, you're golden. What's amazing too, is when I finish like a focus block of time where I've worked really well for three or four hours, the feeling of when I leave is just such a feeling of accomplishment. Like, cause I know that the, that time was spent on valuable activity. And then I leave knowing like that was really good and I want to do it again. And then I had the momentum to go actually do it again. And like, when I wrote my last book, like I had those days stacked together in four to five hour writing blocks day after day after day for weeks on end until the book was finished. And every day just gave me that sense of like, I'm excited about this. Let's do it again yeah. tomorrow. And I love that feeling so much. 
Yeah. And, and it, it's an amazing feeling. And right. I wish everybody could feel it. And you can <laughs> just follow these simple rules. Well, dude, uh, this was amazing. Jeff, thank you so much for being on the show. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, perhaps I could be on your show as well. I feel like we've got more stuff to talk about. There's a lot here to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is, this has been a really cool conversation. So, um, but yeah, man, let's keep in touch. And is there anything you want to leave the audience with on where they can find you, where they can get more information on you? Sure. Uh, the website is jeffsanders.com and my podcast is called the 5am miracle, which you can get access to in any app you use for podcasting. Uh, that's probably the best place to begin. I also have a couple of books on Amazon, so you can find those once again, jeffsanders.com for those. Perfect. All right, brother. Well, thank you so much. This has been a blast. I appreciate it. Cool. Thank you. All right, man. Take care. Bye. That's it for the five core life. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button on this video and pound that subscribe button so you get notified when new episodes drop. Also, please fill out the free five core life evaluator quiz. It's a great way to get a baseline of where you are and the five cores and which of the five cores you need support in addition, you'll get some actionable advice that you can apply and start improving your life in the areas that you need it most. That's it for today's episode of the Five Core Life Podcast. Have a wonderful day. Get moving. Gain momentum. Join the movement. Join Emmett by going to moremomentum.com to take a free life evaluator quiz on where you currently stand in each of your five cores.